Hey everyone, thank you for joining me for another YouTube video discussion. Now, I did want to talk about the next-gen Switch. Uh, a lot of my ideas for, you know, the controllers and stuff like that. A lot of that's already been talked about before in the top picks, so I don't really feel like revisiting that. But as of right now, we do have a planned Retro Rewind podcast coming up over the weekend. Um, and once we record that and... I, and uh, you know, I get that. I might talk about that there. Um, so feel free to join us for that. Um, because really, outside of just a couple of little nitpicky things, there's pretty much nothing new that, that, that I can add to what I've already said in the top picks video. But for this top picks, I'm going to go a little bit to the right. Because of the fact is that while I am normally a Nintendo channel, my second favorite console is the PlayStation you know, I typically always like playing PlayStation games. I think they got some great exclusives. They still focus on single player um, experiences, which to me is just, you know, chef's kiss kind of thing. Um, but I did kind of still feel like there's some room for improvement. I mean, I am currently in the beta to, you know, show off some new features that are coming uh, down the road with PlayStation. And while I'm not at liberty to talk about those, um, I did kind of have an idea that got me thinking in my brain while I was trying to test out a lot of these new features and kind of see, oh yeah, I can see how, you know, that might be beneficial. I kind of got thinking, well, what is missing from the interface portion of the um, PlayStation uh, that could really benefit? You know, I mean, outside of the usual stuff, because I mean, the PS4 uh, and the Xbox they allow for customization. You know, and I think that, that is something that's missing is customization. Um, so number one pick is customize it. You know, I mean, outside of changing the font to be bold or changing the size of the font, change how they look. You know, like maybe make it um, like you can do with uh, Word and Pages and all that stuff like that and just change the different font types to where they look Interesting. You know, that was something that I liked about, um, I think they did it on the on the Vita also. But it changed the icons, how they looked. It changed the fonts and how they looked. Um, it also changed the sounds to be game specific if you downloaded something like the Lair uh, theme, for an example. Um, it really just changed the way that the PlayStation felt. And while there's absolutely nothing wrong with the interface of the PS5, it is lacking, sort of like the Switch is lacking in how it could use a theme. Even if it's something where it's just changing the background, like you can on the Xbox Series X, you know, like you can at least change the color of the ripples. You can at least do something like that, even if you don't want to make it a customized picture or you know, a game specific theme, you could at least say, I want the ripples, but I want them in green. I want them in blue. At least do something. Uh, just a lot of customization. Um, and so the number two pick, and uh, this is probably just me. It shows it in the PS4 interface for trophies, but not so much for the interface on the PS5. Show us rarity because if you look at the bar that it has for PS5, it shows the icon over here and it's grayed out. Usually gives you the name and if it will allow it a, de a description. And then I think over here it tells you like when you earned it or whatever. But there's still a huge gap. And I think if they like allow you for a photo or whatever, it will show. So okay, cool, but. See, at least with the PS4, that whole thing is filled up because it shows the it shows the, the trophy icon, it shows the name, it shows the description. Usually, right next to it is the picture that it takes and the time that it earns it. Plus, it also shows you a rarity as a as a pyramid. I liked the circle system. I think they should go back to using circles. The four circles to show common, uncommon, rare, ultra rare. Um, just to be like, this is based upon users who played this game. This is an ultra rare trophy that only 2.5% of people earned. What, what have you. But there's just so much room to fill within the, the trophy area. That when you're looking at trophies, it kind of just feels kind of barren. Now, at the end of the day, is that really that important? No, because most people 
I, me included, I mostly just go and look at the trophy list or the achievement list just to see what I need to accomplish. And after that, it's just kind of secondary. But still, it's kind of nice to feel like and this is probably just me and again my OCD my whole idea of man there's a gap there <laughs> you know something needs to be filling in that gap um, which my family would tell you like I have a thing of corners something's got to go in a corner it just doesn't feel right to have an open corner um, something like that which is like let's fill up the space you know let's maybe instead of putting the percentage inside of the icon move it over to the right it was like here's what the picture looks like, here's the description of it, here's how close you are to it. You know, just something to give us more fulfillment out of the trophy list for those of us who look at the trophies. I know that you can allow them to be pinned, I think to track them. I have not tried that feature, but I, something else that I would love to see if this isn't pinning them is to do something like what Xbox does and give us a tracker that allows us to basically have it be semi-transparent in a corner of choice and it just shows you hey this is the next closest trophy that you're gonna be earning based upon your current route and you kind of think oh okay you know like if I pick up an item maybe the first one pops but then another one says to collect five I'm like oh okay well let's keep this going and I just continue on um, just as an idea. I think that there needs to be some kind of a trophy tracker, kind of they have an achievement tracker. I'm going to go mess with that probably after this um, to see if that's what pinning a trophy does. But my understanding is that pinning a trophy puts it on the um, command center to where it um, basically just lets you see, see it. Um, but with that being said, we need to change the way the user interface looks. I like the way that the Xbox Series X looks, how it has most of the, the more important stuff up at the top. Let's do something like that. Like, don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having that command center. You press the PlayStation button, it pulls it up, and it gives you all this important information. But why isn't that already at the top? See, yeah, it's cool that you got settings up there, and you got my profile up there, but I'm not going to access settings nearly as much as I'm going to be accessing microphone as much as I'm gonna be accessing VR settings as much as I'm gonna be accessing uh, songs if I'm going through Spotify as much as I'm gonna be accessing trophies so it seems like you need to have that stuff which is more important up there and have the less important stuff like my profile settings and all that in the command bar so that way if it comes up it comes up um, I mean, I get it in a way because it's like the PS4 when you press the PlayStation button, it brought up stuff to the left as far as I like, can hey, turn this off, that and the other. But at least with the PlayStation 4, I, I could navigate it. Like, I knew that the very first option is to put it in rest mode. So when I put, so if I accidentally turn on the PS4 and the TV's off, okay, I'm going to press PlayStation and I'm going to press cross and it's going to instantly go back to sleep because I know that's the first option. That's not so easy to navigate. It probably is going to be now because of one of the beta features that I don't really think that I'm really at liberty to talk about. But let's just say it uses the controller in a way that might make it easier for you to figure out where you're at in the control center if you're not looking at the TV. But um, outside of that, you really just kind of have to keep holding it to the right and hope that you're in rest mode. But is it really that big of a deal? No, because nine times out of 10, you're not gonna have the TV off anyway. You're gonna have it on and you're gonna see it. But I just feel like it needs to be up there, have the more important stuff up there. Or again, going back to the very first pick, let us customize it to where we can choose, just like you can have us choose what goes in that command center. You can have us say, yeah, I don't need this, pull this out, remove accessibility, remove blah, 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 and add this stuff in. Let us do that. Let us choose. Let us swap. Let us choose. It's almost like the command center or whatever they call it on, a, on, a, on an iPhone or iOS device where you can say, okay, well, you know, you can put in a focus, you can put in whatever, and you can remove this stuff to basically to where you pull this thing down, it's got everything that you need right there. Um, or even on an Android phone, it allows you to do that. You just drag it down, it's right there. So. 
I think it needs to be something simple as that where maybe if I touch the trackpad and I drag down from it, it pulls the command center down and it's all right there. Um, just something to make it more customizable and easier for us to get to the stuff that we want to get to. At the end of the day, is it really that big of a deal? No, it's still kind of easier to use uh, than some other consoles that I've used in the past. But I'm just saying that it would be nice to have something different. But those are just my top picks for how they could change the PlayStation user interface. It's not a very long list, I know. But it was just stuff that was in my head. And I thought, let me share this, see if anybody else agrees with these or if they have any thoughts of their own. So what, what are your thoughts on the PlayStation 5 interface and how it can improve? I'd love to hear what you have to say uh, for a fact. But I see that I've gone way over the 10 minute limit that I gave myself, so I do apologize. But I hope that you all have yourself a great rest of your day. And uh, I will talk to you in the next video, which hopefully will be a rewind, so join us for that. But even if it's not, I'll still talk to you in the next video, and have yourself a good day.